Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Hey, Wheel of Time is filled with battles and there's a great emphasis placed on the skill of the various battle commanders. In today's video, we're gonna be ranking the 15 best battle commanders in the Wheel of Time book series. Before getting into the video, I wanna give a huge thank you to the folks over at audible.com. They are a major sponsor for my channel and if you don't already know about the amazing offer they have for my viewers, make sure you pay attention. You can get a free audiobook from Audible with zero commitment, and it'll really help out the channel by doing it. How, you might ask? Well, it's super easy. Go to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and sign up for a one month free trial for the Audible service. You'll get a free audiobook of your choice from their selection of thousands of titles. You can then decide if you want to keep the service or not, but either way, you're going to get to keep the free audiobook. Did I mention that you're really helping out the channel by signing up? But let's go ahead and dive into the video. We'll start by throwing up a spoiler warning. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, meaning it will contain major spoilers all the way through the final book, A Memory of Light. If you don't want any spoilers, you can click away now and come back to watch this video once you've finished the series. So before giving you my list, let me give you a few of the rules I used when I was making it. First off, I only ranked people that were alive during the main story. So Arter Hawkwing and generals from the past will not be on this list. Also, I based my opinions off of what others said about each of the characters within the novels, as well as what we see them actually doing as battle commanders in the series. Keep in mind, these are my opinions, and I fully expect you to have some different opinions, and I'd love to hear yours in the comments after the video. So let's dive into our list. Coming in at number 15 on my list, Sean Chan Lieutenant General Ty Lee Kurgan. Tylee Kurgan is a Shan Chan lieutenant general from an island called Maram Kashor off the Shan Chan coast. She was sent with the return to reconquer the Westlands for the Empress of the Shan Chan. She was previously a banner general, a lower rank, and was tasked with finding and eliminating the Shido Aiel threat. In the course of her searching, she meets with Perrin Ibarra and joins forces with him to eliminate the Shido threat at Malden. After this victory, she and her army defeat a large force of Trollocs, the first force of Trollocs that the Shan Chan had even encountered. After these victories, Victory, she is promoted to Lieutenant General, and during the last battle she assists Matt Cawthon in saving the forces of the White Tower as they are almost overrun with Trollocs and Kandor. She makes this list for her skill and precision in battle, as noted by Perrin and by her Shan Chan commanders for her victories. Coming in at number 14, we have Lord Talmanis de la Vende. Talmanis is a Kyrianan lord and second-in-command of the Band of the Red Hand, Matram Cawthon's mercenary force. He originally became involved with the band after following Matt during the Battle of Kyrian while defeating the Shido. He was attracted to Matt as a winner and as a tactician, and later develops even more respect for Matt and leads the band while Matt is away. Talmanis proves very effective at not only leading the band, but growing its ranks and providing the infrastructure and financing its growth. His skill as a battle commander is seen as he defends the dragons in Camelin after the city is overrun, and then later during the last battle as he leads the band through the battle, and is one of the primary reasons for the victory through the use of the dragons. He gets further marks as a commander as he learns from Matt Cawthon's military genius. And he also has a very fine military education that is furthered with his experience in battle throughout the series. Coming in at number 13, we have Lan Mandragoran, King of Fallen Malkir. Lan Mandragoran is primarily known for being a warder and an extremely skilled warrior, which makes him a strange choice for this list as we rarely see him leading and commanding battles. That is, until the last battle. During the last battle, Lan leads the Malkieri and eventually all of the Borderland armies. Although he was not originally directing the battle, that was Lord Agomar, he was able to notice the mistakes and piece together the problems that Lord Agomar's plans had as he was under compulsion. Lan was then able to save their forces through quick command decisions. It is these skills as a battle leader and a lifetime devoted to battle and fighting that earn him a spot on this list. With the number 12 spot on the list, we have another Shan Chan, Kenar Mirage. Kenar Mirage was a Shan Chan Captain General, the highest ranking officer in the Shan Chan military. He was leading the forces of the Shan Chan during the battles of Ilion and Altara with the Dragon Reborn's armies. 
He proves himself very, very skilled at fighting a hit-and-run war against Rand's forces, and holds the battle to a standstill, forcing a draw. He was going against another great captain, and Rand himself, in planning, and despite not having fought the Ashaman before, he was able to counter and hold their forces and force the draw. Although he was killed during the battle by Rand's use of Kalandor, he proved his prowess as a battle commander during these battles. Coming in at number 11, we have the first of our Taviran boys, Paranabara. Paranabara does not consider himself a general or even a good leader, but time and time again throughout the series he proves himself to be both. His first time leading men into battle was during the Battle of the Two Rivers, as he led the untrained peoples of the Two Rivers to a victory over the Trolloc armies that had been burning the farms in the area. He was able to mobilize a defense that was very successful. Later he led the forces that set out to free Rand when he was captured by the Tower Aes Sedai. He led a charge at, at the Battle of Dumai's Wells and assisted in freeing Rand. Later he led his forces against the Shido Ail at the Battle of Malden and put together a very strategic plan to negate the Shido Wise Ones. He then also rescues Galad's White Cloaks from a Trolloc ambush. The only reason he is not higher on my list is that he tends to lead his people into battle himself, and once the battle has started he's a little less strategic and more primal in his decision making. His ability to lead and plan ahead though are what make him such a capable battle commander and earns him a spot on this list. Breaking into the top 10 we have Ruark, clan chief of the Tardad Aiel. Ruark is one of the clan chiefs among the Aiel and has extensive battle experience as the Aiel were in a constant state of war among themselves before the events of Rand coming to them. He led the force of Aiel that came to the Westlands seeking the Karakarn, and he was among the Aiel that took the Stone of Tyr. Later he leads a battle against the Shido at the Battle of Kyrian, formulating the battle strategy along with the other clan chiefs. He also leads the forces that bring peace to Eridamon, and later helps lead the forces of the Aiel that take the Valley of Thakandar as Rand confronts the Dark One. Although he is eventually killed after being compulsed by Grendel, he proves his battle acumen over and over, and his experience gives him a high place in the, in the list of capable battle commanders in the story. With the number 9 spot, we have Lord Agomar Jahad, leader of the Shinaran armies and one of the five great captains of the Westlands. Lord Agomar is nephew to the King of Shinar and leads Shinar's armies. We first see him lead the forces of Shinar to Tarwin's Gap in the Eye of the World, as he leads his forces to almost certain defeat while Rand and company head to the Eye of the World. Later, we see him lead the Borderlander armies during the last battle at Tarwin's Gap and through Shinar. He is able to hold off a vastly superior force of Shadowspawn through a defensive tactic and war strategy, and really only begins to fail as his mind is polluted with Grendel's compulsion. He is accounted one of the five best commanders in the Westlands and he carries the title of Great Captain and is thought of as a legendary commander among his forces. The only reasons we don't see him higher on this list is we don't really get to see him use many amazing battle tactics without compulsion as we do with some of the other commanders on this list. Coming in at number eight we have Pedrin Nial, the Lord Captain Commander of the Children of the Light. <laughs> Hadrian Niall is considered to be another of the great captains of the Westlands and was very well respected as a battle commander, primarily due to his actions during the White Cloak War, which took place 41 years prior to the beginning of the story, when he was able to lead the White Cloaks to victories over the armies of Ilion and a coalition against him. He later served as one of the major commanders during the Aiel invasion during the Aiel Wars, where he further cemented himself as one of the most feared and respected battle commanders. He was a master strategist and planned many, many steps ahead of everyone else. Think Tywin Lannister with more battle command skills. There is actually some evidence that after his death at the hands of his spy master that we will see him reborn bound to the wheel and would serve among the heroes of the Horn of Valyr, as he saw mist at his death and he saw himself leading a charge which was similar to what you see with the Horn of Valyr. With the number seven spot on my list, we have the first Forsaken to make the list, Samael. Formerly known as Tel Jenin Elinsar, Samael was considered one of the foremost generals of, for the forces of light during the War of Power at the end of the Age of Legends. He defected to the Shadow in what was a major blow to the side of the light and became one of the Shadow's top generals. After he woke during the current age, he assumed leadership of Ilion under the name of Lord Brend and created a defensive perimeter around the country. His tactics in creating the defenses were actually quite effective, and he had backup plans in case Rand bypassed his defenses. He knew he was up against a superior force. He was always very skilled at defensive warfare, and that combined with his vast experience as a battle commander, and one of the top battle commanders for the Forces of Light, give him the number 7 spot on this list. Coming in at number 6, we have none other than the 
Dragon Reborn himself, Randall Thor. Randall Thor himself, while quite intelligent and calculating, would not find himself on this list as he was trained as nothing but that of a farmer. But the fact that he is the Dragon Reborn and by the end of the series carries all of Luz Theron Telamon's memories makes him one of the most experienced military minds and one of the greater generals of the time. He was the leader of the forces of light during the War of Power and was a very successful military commander. During the current age, Rand, with some advice from some others on this list, was able to create complex battle strategies that proved very effective. He did this in Kyrian in defeating the Shido, later when confronting Samael against the Shanchan and Altara, and created plans to take Eridaman. He originally wanted to lead the military forces of the light during the last battle, but we never got to see this as it was decided that despite his skill that he would be unable to lead the forces from the boar. Due to his experience from Luz Theron Telamon's memories and the extreme skill and calculated planning that he shows during the current age, Randall Thor gets the number six spot on my list. Breaking into the top five, we have Gareth Bryn. Gareth Bryn was once the Captain General of the Queen's Guard in Andor to Queen Morghese, and, and also her lover. He was considered one of the great captains of the Westlands, and he later went on to lead the armies of the Rebel Aes Sedai, and later that of the Combined White Tower forces. He demonstrates his skill at administration, planning, and battle tactics. He is extremely intelligent and very thoughtful. He pioneers various new scouting techniques using gateways and proves himself through the Siege of Tarvalin and during the last battle as being extremely competent and a genius with tactics. It isn't until he's compelled by Grendel that we really see him as a failure. Due to his reputation and the skill we see him demonstrate, he earns the number five spot on the list. With the number four spot on my list, we have another of the great captains and one of my favorite side characters in the books, Davrin Bashir. Davrin Bashir is the Marshal General to the forces of Saldea and uncle to the Queen of Saldea. He is one of the five great captains of the Westlands and continually shows his skill at command throughout the novels. He originally leaves Saldea to chase down Mazram Taim as he escaped the Aes Sedai and ends up following Rand. He leads the Legion of the Dragon and the Saldean Cavalry Force throughout much of the novels. He is instrumental in planning Rand's attack on Ilion, Altara, and during the last battle. He is a deft tactician and a fearless battle commander. He was the main tactical advisor to Rand during Rand's time of gathering the nations together to get ready for the last battle. Davern Bashir is eventually overcome by compulsion from Grendel, as with the other great captains. His actions throughout the novel, combined with his reputation, give him the number four spot on this list. Coming in at number three, we have the last of the great captains, and probably my favorite of the generals we see in the novel, Rodal Iteralda. Rodal Iteralda is a Domani general that is considered one of the great captains of the Westland. He is nicknamed the Wolf and is one of the more creative of the generals when it comes to tactics, often making use of very unconventional tactics to achieve victory. He is extremely resourceful. During the story, we first see him as he leads a resistance to the Shan Chan in Terabon. He leads a guerrilla war against the Shan Chan, inflicting heavy losses on them in Terabon. He is able to defeat a force of 300,000 Shan Chan with just an army of 100,000. Later, he is conscripted by the the Dragon Reborn to defend Saldea in its capital city of Meridon. He takes his army and some Ashaman to the border of the Blight in Saldea and proceeds to defend against a massive Trolloc army. He holds the riverbank that serves as the border for days before being overrun and retreating into the city where he holds in an urban warfare battle against the Trolloc armies. His work in preserving his army is masterful and the tactics that he uses are extremely creative. He is eventually saved by Rand and Bashir and Rand proceeds to destroy the Trolloc army all by himself. He is then put to use in the last battle at the Valley of Thakandar, where he leads the forces of the Light there as they take the valley and defend the pass from the Trollocs. He is also subject to Grendel's compulsion, but he is able to resist it and allows himself to be taken captive by Elias Machera to keep him from leading the armies to ruin. Rodal Iteralda is one of the great captains, and we get the most point of view chapters from him, and it's really fun to see how his mind works and how his creativity functions during his battle plans. This creativity and skill is why he earns the number three spot on my my list. Coming in at number two, we get the most feared general for the shadow, Barad Bel Madar, also known as the Forsaken Demon Dread. Demodred is one of the most feared battle commanders during the War of Power at the end of the Age of Legends, and it is thought that he was the most skilled general of his time. He is extremely intelligent, and it was said that he more than matched Luz Theron in his abilities at commanding armies. 
During the events of the novels, we don't see anything from him really until the last battle, when he leads the entire forces of the Sharan army to battle and decimates the forces of the White Tower. He assumes battle command of the armies of the Shadow and proves his skill at directing the battle, where the Shadow is extremely close to being victorious despite various limitations. Matt acknowledges him to be an extremely talented commander, and it is really arrogance and his blind hatred of Rand that helped the forces of the Light defeat him. If he had not been killed by Lan, it is likely that the forces of the Light would have lost. Due to his experience, intelligence, reputation, and incredible power, he earns the number two spot on my list. And finally, with my number one spot, probably is no surprise to anyone, Matram Cawthon. <laughs> Matt is a farm boy from the Two Rivers area of Andor, but carries the blood of the fallen kingdom of Manetherin deeply within him, and he's a very strong Taviran. He gains the memories of thousands of generals from the past when he is given these memories by the Aelfin and Aelfin, and this makes him absolutely peerless as a tactician. He has more battle experience than any person alive, including the Forsaken, and combined with his crazy luck due to being Taviran, he's almost unbeatable in battle. He first proves his battle acumen when he reluctantly leads some of the Kyrian forces during the Battle of Kyrian with the Shido, and this begins the Band of the Red Hand. Matt helps create the plan to take Ilion from Semiel, and later defeats an army of Shan Chan with the Band and some Death Watch guards and protecting Tuon. During the last battle is where we really see Matt shine. After the Great Captains are corrupted and compelled by Grendel, it is realized that Matt is the only person that would be immune to this corruption, and he is given absolute control over the forces of the Light. Matt, despite being outgunned with channelers, vastly out numbered in men, is constantly able to keep the army alive and moving, playing a very delicate game with Demon Dread's forces during the last battle until he's able to maneuver the battle into a place where the light completely obliterates the Sharan and Trolloc armies. It is really unquestioned who the greatest tactician and battle commander in the series is, and Matt clearly takes the number one spot. So that's my list. I know it's going to cause some debate, and I'm curious what all of you will think. What did I get right? What did I get wrong? Let me know in the comments below. And if you are liking the content, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release new content. You can click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when my new stuff comes out. I'd also love to have you in my Discord server where I can interact with all of you more. We have a very healthy community there where we're always interacting and you guys can give me new ideas for videos and we can overall just discuss the series and the upcoming TV show. You can join the Discord server by checking out my Patreon. The information is posted there on how to join. You can find the link for the Patreon in the description below. I'm looking forward to talking with all of you. Hey guys, until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?